In this video, we will delve into the captivating universe of the movie Dune, revealing amazing facts and interesting details about the making of this epic film. Get ready to learn more about the characters, plot, visual choices, and much more that made Dune one of the most remarkable movies. Welcome to the world of sand dunes, political intrigue, and fantastic adventures. Let's get started. It's amazing that the author of the Dune novel, Frank Herbert, once wanted to undertake the film adaptation of his book. In 1976, the rights were acquired by Dino De Laurentiis, who hired Herbert to write the screenplay in 1978. Frank wrote a three-hour version of the film. In 1979, Ridley Scott was hired to direct, but the screenplay was eventually written by someone else. Scott ultimately declined the direction, not wanting to spend two years on the film, and also coping with the death of his brother, he felt the film wouldn't withstand it. In 1984, the first adaptation came to light under the direction of David Lynch. However, the initial three-hour film was cut down to 137 minutes. The film was poorly received and Lynch eventually disowned it. Also fascinating is how the lead actor of the film learned to walk on the sand. In order to authentically portray walking on the sand as a Fremen, Timothy Chalamet underwent rigorous training under the guidance of choreographer Benjamin Millipied. During the training, the actor insisted on incorporating something instinctive and natural into his movements to convey the unique freedom and lightness characteristic of the desert dwellers in the world of Dune. Moreover, Chalamet being a key figure in training his on-screen mother Jessica, paid attention to the script details and the character Character's movement characteristics. This emphasizes his commitment not only to physical preparation but also to a deeper understanding of the film's context. Do you know why Stellan Skarsgård was chosen for the role of Baron Harkonnen? It's all because Villeneuve found the actor intimidating enough. Denis Villeneuve envisioned Baron Vladimir Harkonnen's character as a rhinoceros in human form. The director also decided up front that they wouldn't resort to computer graphics for creating the character but would use prosthetics, believing it would create a stronger connection between the actor and the character. Stellan Skarsgård spent seven hours each day in the makeup chair to bring the character to life. Makeup artists, by the way, praised Stellan's professionalism, noting that many actors need a break or a phone call every 20 minutes, whereas Stellan sat for seven hours straight without even asking for a lunch break. This actor had to wear a silicone cap on his head to appear bald. David Desmalchan portrayed Peter de Vries and, according to him, agreed to the role without reading the script because he trusted Villeneuve greatly. The appearance of his character as well as the entire house Harkonnen was bald, and David initially was fully prepared to shave his head. Later, he got a role in another film called the makeup artist Donald Mowat and apologized, explaining that he couldn't shave his head. The makeup team discussed and concluded that the look could be achieved using a silicone cap, and that's exactly what they did. Where were these amazing landscapes found for the film's shooting? For Dune, stunning natural locations were chosen to emphasize the grandeur and atmosphere of the Freeman world. One of the key locations was the vast desert region in the southern part of the Arabian Peninsula, the Rub al Khali Desert in the United Arab Emirates. This desert terrain provided the perfect backdrop for the sandy dunes, creating an atmosphere of a distant and hostile desert world. In addition, for scenes related to arid and vast land landscapes, the Wadi Rum Desert in Jordan was selected. This location also added unique textures and colors, reflecting the world of Arrakis and its hazardous conditions. The choice of such breathtaking natural places complemented the overall aesthetics of the film and added authenticity to the fantastic world of Dune. How was the appearance of a fantastic city like Arrakis created? To fully immerse viewers in the world of Dune and convey the atmosphere of Arrakis, the design team carefully studied the climate and conditions described in the book. Under the influence of this information, Patrice Vermette created the design of the city of Arrakis in the form of a stone bowl, which serves as protection against sandworm attacks. Architectural features such as angular buildings were developed to minimize the impact of strong winds characteristic of Arrakis. They also conducted reconnaissance in the Wadi Rum Desert 
and found a similar settlement surrounded by rocks, basing the design on this. By the way, graphics specialists created a low-resolution model of the city and transferred it to a tablet so that Denis Villeneuve could plan camera angles as if he were shooting from a helicopter. As a result, the combination of careful study of nature and innovative shooting methods created an impressive city design that effectively conveys the atmosphere of the Dune book. Not many talk about the reasons that make you believe in the world of the Dune movie. One of the reasons for deep immersion in the film is the characters' images and costumes. When creating costumes, Villeneuve instructed to base them on history and not rely on futuristic designs commonly seen in movies. The goal was to infuse a philosophical atmosphere. Designers Jacqueline West and Bob Morgan delved into history, studying each character and concluding that the costumes should be rooted in the medieval era, but envisioned with a contemporary twist. The Atreides house costumes were inspired by the House of Romanov, associated with the end of an empire while the Beni. Gesserit costumes drew inspiration from tarot cards and chess. As for the Sardaukar, Jacqueline referred to them as the Nazis of the Dune universe. Additionally, the costume creation drew inspiration from artists such as Caravaggio, Goya, and Giotto di Bondone. Some influences were also taken from Cristobal Balenciaga, particularly the dresses of Lady Jessica. Let's go further. Who are the navigators? In the Dune universe, there is a guild of navigators through whom space travel actually takes place. Little is known about them, and the film doesn't show the process of travel at all. We only saw tunnel-shaped ships. During the arrival of the Reverend Mother's ship, you can notice the planet at the other end of the ship, indicating the instantaneous nature of movement. In the Legends of Dune, it is explained that the guild can fold space, which means that the point of departure and the point of arrival can be very close to each other. However, complex calculations are required for this, and they can only be performed by the navigators of the guild with the help of spice. That's why it is so important important and valuable. Possess spice, possess space. By the way, what are the differences between the film and the book? There are, of course, a huge number of them, and even the inattentive reader will notice how much the film differs. First of all, the beginning of the film was not in the book. In Herbert's Dune, it starts with Paul's trial. Everything you saw before that was added by Denis Villeneuve. According to the book, Paul's close friend was Gurney Halleck, while in the film, it's Duncan Idaho. In the book, Gurney is a lover of songs and played the balisset before training. In the film, this hobby is mentioned only as a joke. I've had quite a day, Gurney. Give us a song instead. Although, can you imagine Gurney singing in the film? The storyline of Peter de Vries was significantly cut. In the book, he very much wanted Lady Jessica and was quite cunning, and the betrayal of Dr. Yue was explained because he underwent imperial conditioning, which theoretically guarantees loyalty. But de Vries found a way to bypass it. The line of Lady Jessica and House Harkonnen was also cut, and in the film, it's not entirely clear why she and in the book, he supported House Atreides. Moreover, there were many political discussions in the book, and several events occurred before the Duke Leto's murder. In general, Dune is truly extensive material that is challenging to condense even into a four-hour film. It's interesting how they thought through the image of such monsters as sandworms. The graphics team didn't quite understand how the worm should move. They spent a year just thinking about the image and studying the movement, based on simple worms and snakes. The ripple on the sand was inspired by the movie Jaws, and the special effects supervisor Gerd Nefzer took and made a vibrating steel plate and placed it under the sand. This is how various patterns were created, indicating the approach of the worm. By the way, the sound accompaniment of the worm was recorded in practice. Villeneuve did not want the sound design to sound studio-like, and sound designers went to Death Valley to record the shifting sands with a hydrophone. Everything in the film is thought out to the smallest detail. Even a unique religion was devised. For example, when Gurney Halleck occasionally flips through a small book, it is apparently the Orange Catholic Bible, the main religious text of the Empire in the world of Dune. 
This book represents a unique synthesis of ancient religious beliefs from Earth, with a pronounced emphasis on Islamic roots. Its content likely reflects the values and doctrines underlying society in the Dune universe, creating a deep and interesting context for understanding the cultural and religious aspects of this fantastic world. The number of awards received as a result of hard work cannot fail to amaze. The film received 219 nominations at various awards and festivals, winning 88. At the Oscars, the film was presented in 10 categories, winning 6 Best Cinematography, Best Production Design, Best Sound, Editing, Visual Effects, and Original Score. By the way, for composer Hans Zimmer, this was his 11th Oscar nomination. He couldn't attend the ceremony because he was giving a concert in Amsterdam, and the actors of the film did it for him. At the BAFTA Awards, the film was nominated in 11 categories, winning 5 Best Cinematography, Best Sound, Visual Effects, Original Score, and Best Production Design. The film also received a Golden Globe for Best Original Score and a Saturn Award for Best Makeup. So today we've explored interesting details and immersed ourselves in the magic of the fantastic universe of Dune. Don't forget to stay tuned for new projects and news with us. See you in the next videos and may the sandy winds and thrilling adventures always accompany you.